my theories from. I get a lot of my theories just from very practical ways. Thank you, thank you. So my father, before he became a professor, he was in the Marine Corps. So he disciplined us like little Marines. I mean, and I love the phrase, discipline without rapport brings rebellion. My dad was a very strict disciplinary, very strict. But I didn't rebel and do bad things in high school because he loved us. He held us. He went to our basketball game. You know what I mean? He loved us. So you show me somebody that's hard, a little bit of disciplinary on a dog, if they have a good relationship, the dog will still be okay, even if they're a little too hard to handle. Um, the next thing is uh, I have four le – well, let me talk about the sugar diet. So where I was going with the Marine Corps – we started the sugar diet since I can remember like four or five years old. So the, all the month of January, we went without any sugar process. You could have natural sugar like lactose or fruit, but no processed sugar. I don't know, we just did that. Just growing up. So the whole month of January, he just disciplined us, no sugar. And then, and I still do that in October. Uh, I do it with, uh, I did it with my students because I taught U.S. history. And I don't know if you remember the sugar islands and all that, like the triangular trade. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I said America was based on... The taste buds. Uh, the Columbus on the third discovery of America was only looking for the spice trade. He was looking for India. And I said, you guys would have a hard time going without sugar. These are eighth graders. They're like, we can go without sugar. I said, no, I did this growing up. It was when I first started teaching. They're like, we can go without sugar. I said, no, I'm talking like no processed sugar, no donuts, no cupcakes, nothing. They're like, okay, no, uh, we can't. I said, all right, I challenge you to go one month. And they said, well, what do we do if we get it? I said, nothing. There's no extra credit. This is your goal. Can you do it? I could have done a study on this. I had 150 students, five preps, 30 in a class. And out of my 150 students, 12 could make it. And they were, guess what they always were? My straight A students. I found that very interesting. They were able to set a goal without any accolades. One little boy was cute and he said, well, we don't get any points. I said, no points. It's your goal. And he goes, well, what if we cheat? I'm like, it's your goal. If you're in the closet, I told him, if you're in the closet eating sugar, you can cheat all you want. Raise your hand. I did it. You cheated. It's your goal. I always tell people, what's your goal in Schutz? What is your goal? Because my friends all think I'm ludicrous. So if you win nationals, what are you getting? I'm like, a trophy. They're like, you don't get like millions? I'm like, no, I get a trophy. And I'm like, it's my goal. So when I'm out laying a track by myself, no one's on the, like, that was a nice corner you laid, great corner, Joel. You're by yourself for your goal. So I always ask people, you, you guys determine your own goal. What I don't know, whatever it is, I just want to do a BH. I want to make a one. I want to compete at a high level. There are things that are not going to happen unless you have a program that are steps. I'm telling you now. So there's, a, there's 50 million different programs out there. If you go to Marcus's, I don't know his program. I know it's genius because I've seen his work, the finished product, but I don't know how he does things. But what's really best is to find a program and stick with it. So let's say you go to Ivan and he wants a motivational out, which means he waits, the helper locks up, he says, Aus, and he waits for the dog to get tired and off of the behavior out. When the dog finally outs, he gives it a bite as a reward. That's a motivational out. Can you picture that? You go to Della Segas, he's going to teach a compulsion out. Aus, and he pulled the dog into him. The dog lets go and he gives him a bite. Both programs are 100% perfect. A compulsion out is 100% perfect. A motivational is out. You cannot mix these two. You can't go Monday for a motivational out, Friday for a compulsion out. You, either way is perfect. But you can't mix programs if they conflict with each other. You guys see what I'm saying there? You, you have to find... So trainer A, like I'm saying, let your dog push to work if you're with me. Trainer B might say, no, they look away, hit them on the E. These two programs will collide. It will not work. So I'm talking about now the negative. So remember I talked about Gerald when I gave him a plots command when his daughter Demi, uh, the 11-month-old, uh, I said, nope. So now I'm talking about now I'm going to correct. Because there comes a time where the rubber meets the road, you are going to fools. You are not allowed to look away and sniff. I have four levels of corrections. All right, level one, no, and I use the leash correction. That's what I talked about with the young dog when they're sniffing the pole, like, slayer, pop. My level two correction, so now he's getting really good at coming every time. My level two correction is no, with a leash combined with an e-call correction. So I do the abstract 
and the concrete. Slayer, no. Tick. I use this simultaneously as this. That way the abstract starts to represent as this. Does that make sense? Like, mm -hmm. no. Tick. Level three, no. And then an e collar correction. There is no leash anymore. For this exercise, just for name. And I do this with each exercise, whether it's foos, plots, whatever. I go through all these steps with each thing that I'm teaching. The next and the highest one is a silent correction. So let's just say I'm on a foos. And my dog has this perfect foos and he looks away. And I'm on step number four. I no longer say no. I just go, tick, 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 tick. good boy. I praise after the correction. That's called a silent correction. I want to always get to this exercise. Because in a trial, I don't have the luxury of saying what? No. Yeah. And I stop repeating myself. These are the four levels. Now here's how I teach the e-collar. This is a very controversial tool. And let me tell you why. A lot of people are misunderstand it. I teach e-collar classes all the time. And guess where I put the e-collar? On the handler. I don't put it on the dog. And I have I use a Dogtra. I'm about to go to uh, e-technologies because Dogtra's product isn't quite as good these days. I put it on their hand. And I start at zero. It goes from zero to 127. And I start playing this game. And I tell them, let me know when you feel it. 13, 14. Hey, I think I felt it. Let's say it's on 15. Does you want me to go up by one? Yeah, 16, I felt it. Now, a dog doesn't have the luxury of saying, I felt it. So I look for things in dogs. I put it on. They're just sniffing around, and I play the same game. And then all of a sudden, you see them do this. I'm like, okay, you felt it. The e-collar is not supposed to be a, a device like, now I got you. Arr, arr, arr. It's not supposed to be that. It's supposed to be, I can communicate with you from distance. It cleans it up. The problem is when people misuse it, that's when it gets a really bad name. Um, just like this. You can say somebody, uh, say, I don't like. The... They're trying to regulate the human heart in America. And this is what's the hard thing. I can say I never corrected my dog, but with a puppy with a spoon and a pan and just scare it when it does something wrong. I might be doing more damage to that dog psychologically than a good old leash correction. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. How about Jim Morrison from The Doors? You guys remember that, Jim Morrison? His dad did not believe in spanking uh, the children, but he believed in berating Jim in front of the siblings. You tell me that didn't do more damage to Jim than an actual good old-fashioned spanking. If you're against spanking, sorry. you know. But I'm just saying... Uh, so if you're going to go into the realm of corrections, you have to think of what is your exit plan. An exit plan is important. I have a friend that went to the uh, West Point, and he was uh, a captain, maybe a major in uh, Iraq. He said, the reason we messed up in Iraq, he said, and I didn't know this, he said, before you ever enter a war, you know what you're supposed to know? Your exit strategy. He said, before you even start your battle plans, you have to have your exit strategy. So when I watch people going into a correction device, I'm like, what is your exit strategy? Mine is a silent correction. I just came up with these four for my brain. I have to know how to exit. Because you see it in trials. Now that I'm judging, I really see it. Leash comes off. -da 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 -da, and I'm like, ah, uh -uh, we got a problem here. This can only take you thus far. Here's the problem with straight motivational training where people don't want to correct. The problem with straight motivational training is it works until it doesn't work. What do I mean by that? My food reward or my ball reward is a seven, but it's desire to kill the cat is a nine. I'll lose every single time. Right. There's no, I have to have something to go over that. Right. So that's where motivational training does break down. Um, or you can have something called a self-rewarding behavior. Does everybody know what a self-rewarding behavior is? How about this? Mm -hmm. This one lady, she was coming out to a trial on my field. I didn't know the dog. I was doing the escape bite and then the out attack it's probably like 10 years ago, and she said, when I come up to say sit for the long bite, my dog's going to want to keep barking. When my dog offers the behavior of sit, quite, you know, so you come next to your dog, it's barking, you say sit, she says, when the dog eventually sits, I'm going to click and I want you to pay him. I'm like, okay, got it, makes sense to my mind. So I do my skate bite, out, re-attack, out she walks up, sit, seven barks, eight barks, nine barks, ten barks, he got quiet, I, she clicked and I paid him. She said, can we do it again? I said, sure. Next time she said, sit, it was like 20 barks. Sit, 70, 18, 19, 20. He eventually sat, click, and I paid him. She uh, came back the next week, and we were up to 50 barks before he sat. 
She said, are we going in the wrong direction? I said, definitely. <laughs> I don't know you're wrong. Right? She said, what do you think is happening? I said, have you ever thought maybe your dog likes barking more than the sleeve? That's called a self-rewarding behavior. What about the dog actually likes uh -oh. barking more than the sleeve itself? I don't know her dog, but it was just, you could see it. She was like, I never thought of that. I'm like, I'm not saying I'm right, but what you're doing is definitely not working. So if we're working, the next time it's five, then two, then one. So I'm not against what she was, her, I wasn't against her theory. I was against how her exit plan was looking. So when you guys are thinking like, I know all my steps with my exit plan and eh, eh, eh. So you have to think of developing your program. So the best thing that you guys could do is when you go to seminars, start developing whatever program you have. So take like, hopefully five things from this and you're like, I like that. Whatever you don't like, throw away. And you go to another seminar, you're like, hey, I can incorporate to that. So you're building into a program. What you don't want to do is when I first started training, I did the worst cut. My poor female, this is like 29 years ago. My poor female, I did this. I'd go to a Franz Dorf seminar. You remember Franz Dorf, Sandy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> These are old names. Uh, Riser. And Fritz, when, Tom, when the mole rats had them all over. Yeah. So I went to Franz Dorf, I'm like, that's how you do it. So I changed my whole program to match Franz's. Then I went to another seminar six months later, I'm like, that's even better, that's how you do it. And I changed programs. That was really then I went, it was very common back in the late 80s, early 90s. And I went to another seminar, that, and my poor female, you could just see her like, she was a freaking way. You could just see her expression, like you're changing it again. It was the worst thing I could have done rather than like, I'm adding something to what I already do. So if you like, unless you don't have a program, but if you already have kind of a program and you like scrap it all and do exactly what I'm doing, saying, it's probably a failure of a seminar. You don't want to do everything. It might not fit your personality. You know, I don't know. If you don't have a program, this is a good place to start. It's a good place to start. And I know it works. I mean, it works for us uh, real well. But I think this is really good to think about. What is your goal? What is my exit plan if my motivation doesn't work? What are steps with my correction? Now the e-collar, the very first thing that I use the e-collar for on step one is what? Name. What's the second thing that I use it for? Don't look away on a foos. This is the most important command in all of Shutsum for me. This is, if you show me a dog with a good foos, I can get your dog to do almost anything. If I have a dog with an exceptional foos going around the one meter, that's, that won't be a problem. The dog has learned how to learn, and foos is the hardest of all. Why? Why is it the hardest? It's the most unnatural exercise in all of canine world. Mm -hmm. You'll see dogs laying down, sitting, jumping logs, um, picking up things. You know what you'll never see a dog doing? A foos. What's the greatest movie of all time? Gladiator. <laughs> I, I love that movie. Anyway, do you remember, if you watch Gladiator again, that first battle scene, did you see that Sable Shepherd? Do you guys remember the shepherd uh, Russell Crowe had? I've never seen that show. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Ah, you ever seen Gladiator? <laughs> <laughs> Leave the seminar, please. <laughs> but no, this, obviously it's not Russell Crowe, but this dog is on a foosing on a, while well, the guy's on a horseback. Mm -hmm. And that dog has, I am like, okay. Cause the first time I saw the movie, I was like, that dog is on a foos. And then it had the bite work within the battle. I'm like, of course, it's a freaking Schutzen dog. It's so easy to teach this dog and you can see the dog's intellect rather than looking around and it all started with a foos in the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> the second thing <laughs> is I teach my dog to hold its down on. Now this one's tricky. So this one, I want you to really get, put your thinking caps on. The first one, come when you're called. Second one, come tighter into me, don't. Now I'm switching everything on the heels. Because if I say plots, and Sandy calls my dog, and my dog gets up, and I say, no, tick, and I hit him on the E, he might think he has to come to me. <coughs> because he's only known the E caller for what? Coming closer to 